Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This one is going to be on a very important topic, exchange traded funds or ETFs. ETFs have become an extremely popular method for investing because they offer instant diversification because an ETF holds many different stocks as the underlying asset and they can often entail very low fees. This approach can give you peace of mind while investing because for example, you can buy the S&P 500 index fund which will give you exposure to all 500 companies listed on the S&P 500 and therefore you are going to get what the market is returning. The fact that ETFs are composed of many companies minimizes your exposure to something adverse happening to any single company and therefore in my book is a simple way to invest passively. Because ETFs trade like stocks, they are also very easy to buy and sell using platforms such as Robinhood. However, there are hundreds of ETFs out there giving you an overabundance of choice. And that is exactly what this video is about. When I started to think about ETFs as a way to dip my toes into the stock market, I was overwhelmed by the number and diversity of options out there. Of course, everyone wants to beat the market in terms of returns or minimize the downside risk of a market crash. I was trying to do both using ETFs and I watched hundreds of YouTube videos comparing different ETFs. These videos were generally of two kinds, one comparing a handful of ETFs or ranking a few number of ETFs based on some arbitrary scale that the YouTuber had. And with the rise of some sensationalist YouTubers recently, things have become just a little bit more murky in my opinion. What I was looking for in an ETF comparison is a clear explanation of the kinds of ETFs out there, how to research them, their relative strengths and weaknesses, their historic performance, and all of it presented in an empirical and quantitative way so that I could make evidence-based decisions. I was also looking for the broadest possible variety of the most popular ETFs so that I could understand the lay of the land before making any choice. So I went ahead and made a list of all the ETFs I had considered buying at one point or another and made this master file of all the information that would have helped me choose. Now before we dive into the details, a few housekeeping rules. Underlined are the ETFs that I currently own, full disclosure. You will also notice that this list is very heavy on Vanguard funds. That's because I am a big fan of what Vanguard has to offer. This information also looks at the historic data dating five years from November 30th, 2020, which is the date when I gathered all of this information. All of the Vanguard data is directly from the Vanguard website for that particular ETF, where if you go under the price and performance tab, you can look at the five year return. For the non Vanguard ETFs, I found this really nifty ETF performance calculator which I will link in the description below. I really like this tool because you can give it custom date ranges for any ETF out there. For example, if you only want to look at certain events such as the 2008 financial crisis, that could be very useful. This tool also makes it very easy to gain historic intuition behind the ETF you are considering. Now, I've split the ETFs into different sectors. The first one is my benchmark, which is VOO, and it is Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF. All ETFs in this video will be compared to this benchmark. Then the first major category is dividend focused ETFs. Dividend investing is a very popular strategy nowadays and some people enjoy the steady stream of income trickling in. You will notice that there are a variety of ETFs listed here such as SPHD which is Invesco's high dividend low volatility ETF as well as VYM which is Vanguard's high dividend yielding ETF. Then we have ETFs focused on the technology sector. Followed by that are some sector specific ETFs spanning multiple different industries. And finally, we have a few bond ETFs for comparison. Next, it is very important to understand our benchmark. VOO has a dividend yield of 1.6% and a very low expense ratio of 0.3% and a beta of one. All of this information is available on Yahoo Finance if you just type in the ticker on their search. Beta is a measure of the volatility of the ETF and a beta greater than 1 indicates an ETF or stock that is more volatile than the market. Therefore, is a bit riskier but usually has a higher potential growth. Think companies like Tesla. 
A beta of less than 1 usually is a product that is less risky but usually comes with a lower expected return. Think Walmart. So for dividend investors, you want to maximize your dividend yield while minimizing your expense ratio. Next, the number of holding indicates the number of underlying assets that the ETF holds. And this gives you some information about how focused the ETF is. Now the most important metrics I wanted to consider in terms of ranking the ETFs are these four parameters right here. I wanted to look at how sensitive the ETF was to the market crash of March 2020. Therefore, I calculated how much the stock dipped by based on its previous high, which was 34% for the S&P 500 index. And then I calculated how much the stock rebounded by based on that low. I also calculated what the five-year annualized return on investment would be on a $10,000 investment initially, which would account to about doubling of that initial value within those five years. What this means is that if you had invested $10,000 in an S&P 500 index five years ago, you would have over $19,000 today. And a return of around 14 to 15% amounts to doubling of your money every five years. In terms of picking an ETF, our goal is to find investments that are not as sensitive to crashes while perhaps offering a better return than the S&P 500. And if we quickly look through the list that I've compiled here of some of the most popular dividend yielding ETFs, we find that only two of these high dividend yielding ETFs were able to re return the same ROI as the S&P 500. And those were Charles Schwab's SCHD and Vanguard's VIG. And ProShares Noble coming in pretty close to what the S&P 500 has returned. All of these other ETFs have underperformed the broader market, including the one from Global X, DIV, which returns a 8.83 dividend yield. However, that ETF has overall returned a negative ROI within the same time frame. This highlights two very important features about the market. First of all, a high dividend yield doesn't necessarily mean outperformance of the market. And second of all, the market is actually really difficult to beat. Of course, that seems easy to understand once you see the numbers here, because if beating the market was so easy, then everybody else would be doing it. Now you may be wondering, why have some of these ETFs have actually underperformed so much? If you look into the holdings for SPYD, you will notice that some of the investments are in real estate. Now real estate is a industry sector that has been hammered by the pandemic and has not recovered as much as the broader market has. Therefore, it is understandable that this SPYD ETF that has a very large holding of real estate investments has underperformed the market. Similarly, Global X's high dividend yielding ETFs generally have riskier investments that are more sensitive to downturns in the economy. Even though the high dividend of 8.83% seems very appealing, if you look at the underlying assets, they may not be as stable as those contained within, for example, NOBL or VIG, which contain some really high quality stocks such as Johnson & Johnson, Walmart, and Procter & Gamble. So the question is, how do you quantitatively compare ETFs before making a purchasing decision? One online resource I found very useful is the ETF comparison tool, linked in the description below that gives you a side-by-side -side comparison of the ETF's historic performance, their exposure to certain industry sectors, and their top holdings. Once you have reviewed your comparison, then you can decide which ETF fits your needs the best. Now let's consider the technology sector, where I have listed three of my favorite ETFs. BOTZ from Global X, QQQ from Invesco, and VGT from Vanguard. And what you will notice immediately is that all three of these ETFs have significantly outperformed the overall market. None of these ETFs crashed as much as the broader market and has since then significantly outperformed what the S&P 500 has returned. That is also reflected in these annualized returns where you can see they easily exceed the 20% mark. 
Now, a 20% annualized return is a very significant number that any investor would be happy with. And if you had invested $10,000 in VGT five years ago, you would have over $31,000 today. Now, one thing to note is that BOTZ only existed since 2016, so it doesn't quite go back to our required five year, but even then has significantly outperformed the market since its inception. Now, moving on to some sector specific ETFs from Vanguard, where we are going to look at a Vanguard real estate ETF or a REIT, Vanguard's Europe specific ETF, Vanguard Public Utilities, Vanguard Financials, Vanguard's Health ETF, a small cap US ETF which focuses on small businesses, world ETF excluding US, Vanguard's growth ETF and Vanguard's consumer ETF. What you will notice here is that the real estate sector, the financial sector and the small businesses sector were particularly hard hit during the crash of March 2020. In contrast, the healthcare sector and Vanguard's growth ETF were far more resilient to the crash. In terms of an annualized return, you can see that the public utilities ETF has done really well, the health sector has done quite well, and the growth and the consumer sectors have done exceptionally well. Now these last two ETFs have exposure to Amazon and Tesla, which explains some of this exceptional growth. But overall, in the sector specific ETFs, the healthcare sector has been an outstanding investment because it is not as sensitive to market crashes while providing a strong rebound and a strong annualized return. And now let's quickly take a look at our last sector, which are bonds. And here we are going to look at three of Vanguard's offering, which is the short term bond ETF, the total bond market ETF and the long term bond ETF. In terms of a risk and reward, BSV or the short term bond is the safest investment you can make, but it also returns the smallest amount. However, a return of 2.6% is still a respectable number. The total bond market ETF returns a 4.4% return, which is still a very healthy return on your initial investment. The long-term bond ETF is a little bit more speculative and hence returns a much stronger 9.2% return. Now, if we take into account all of the information that we have presented to you, there are three different conclusions that you can take away from this video. First, the market is actually really difficult to beat. The S&P 500 ETF from Vanguard has returned an annualized rate of 14% over the last five years. That's a phenomenal amount and you'll notice that only a few of the ETFs have been able to outperform that. Second, the technology sector has significantly outperformed the market overall. Lastly, and this perhaps may be the most important lesson here is that whatever happens, you need to stay invested into the market. And that is because if you consider all of these ETFs that we have compared, only in one scenario does the investor lose out on the annualized basis. And even in that case, it is a very small number. In the vast combinations of ETFs that you could choose from this list, you would have come out ahead on your investment. What do you guys think? Did you think that this list was comprehensive enough and helpful enough in terms of helping you make a decision on your portfolio? Please let me know in the comments. And if you have found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to help out the channel in the future. All the best on your investing adventures and see you on the next video.